If we were to take ice out of a freezer and warm it up to melt it, we know that would require energy. But what if we took ice out of a freezer, melted it, turned it into liquid water, continued heating it until it boiled, and then continued heating the steam after that? Could we calculate how much energy must be absorbed during that entire process? Let's try to do that calculation today. We have a sample problem on the board. It reads, how many calories are needed to heat 50 grams of ice at a really cold temperature, negative 17 degrees Celsius, all the way up to steam at a really hot temperature of 115 degrees Celsius? There's several factors that we have to consider. Let's draw ourselves a diagram to show what happens during those temperature ranges. Let's plot on the x-axis time. We're going to have to heat this ice for quite a long time in order to take it through these different phases. On the y-axis, let's plot temperature in degrees Celsius. When we start out, the ice is at a really cold temperature of negative 17 degrees. At that temperature, we know that ice is frozen. It's a solid. We can gently give it some heat from either a Bunsen burner or a hot plate, and the temperature of the ice begins to rise. We know that the temperature will gradually increase until it reaches a very important temperature, and that is zero degrees Celsius. At zero degrees Celsius, we've reached the melting point of ice. Let's put that on our graph. When we reach zero degrees and the ice begins to melt, it goes through a phase change. At a phase change, the temperature stays the same until all of the solid has turned into a liquid. We show temperature being constant as a plateau. The temperature is not changing at all until all of the solid has turned into a liquid. At this point, the liquid water begins to heat up. The temperature is going to rise until we hit another important temperature, and that's the boiling point of water. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Let's put this on our graph as well. So at 100 degrees Celsius, we expect the liquid water to turn into water vapor, or steam. Once again, we see the plateau. When all of the liquid water has turned into a gas, if we could contain that gas and continue to heat it with either a Bunsen burner or some other means, the temperature of the water vapor would begin to rise again. We can show that small segment on our graph as a line with a slope, an incline, the temperature is increasing. Let's talk about a few important things that are going on during this graph. During the first segment, we'll call that segment one, we know that we're in the solid phase. During segment two, the solid is melting into a liquid. The temperature remains constant until all of the solid has melted into a liquid. Once we reach this point, now the liquid water can increase in temperature again. During phase three, the temperature is increasing. We know that also means that the molecules are beginning to move faster and faster because as the temperature rises, the molecules have more kinetic energy, which means more motion. So we can write that phase three, or part three of this line, is in the liquid phase. Now we hit 100 degrees, and at 100 degrees, we plateau again. We know that the liquid water begins to change into steam. We've reached the boiling point of water. When all of the water has turned into steam, that would be this point at the very end of the plateau. 
Now the temperature begins to rise again. We'll call this small segment number five, and we know that we have steam or water vapor. In other words, it's in the gaseous state. So we have five different parts of this graph, and we know that heat is being added to the system the entire time. But how do we calculate how much heat is being added and how much total heat was gained in the entire process? During step one, we can use the equation heat equals mc delta t to calculate the amount of heat absorbed by the solid ice. I'm going to use the variable Q to represent heat. In this example, we had 50 grams of ice. The variable C stands for specific heat capacity. If we look at a textbook, we can find out how much energy must be added to one gram of ice to get the temperature to rise by one degree Celsius. The specific heat capacity of ice is 0 0.50 calories per gram degree Celsius. That's not a value that you're expected to memorize. You could always look that up in a textbook. So we're going to multiply by 0 0.50 calories per gram degree Celsius. Our next step is to figure out the temperature change that has happened within this small segment. Only the temperature change for segment one. Delta T, in other words, T final minus T initial, can be calculated by looking at T initial is negative 17 degrees and T final is zero degrees. So let's take the final temperature, which is zero, minus the initial temperature, which was negative 17. And we know when you subtract a negative number, it's the same as adding that number. So 0 plus 17 will end up being 17 degrees overall. Let's multiply these three variables together. And you end up with 425 calories. Keep in mind, that's for the first segment only. We have to determine the heat absorbed at all five parts of the graph. Now let's go on to the melting point. One might say, well, let's use MC delta T again. But there's a problem here. We know that the temperature is not changing. We're at a plateau. So if we try to use delta T, delta T would give us a change in temperature of zero. Well, that means the heat absorbed would be zero. And we know that that's not true. Because during the melting point, what the molecules of water are doing, they're going from a very rigid structure where the molecules are merely vibrating to a structure where the molecules are very loose and weaving in and out of each other. Energy is being added to change their positions during this phase change. So what do we use when we try to calculate the heat absorbed during a phase change? It's a different equation. Heat, heat is equal to the mass multiplied by what we call the heat of fusion. The heat of fusion, again, is a value that you can find in a textbook. The heat of fusion is the amount of energy that must be absorbed by one gram of material to make it melt. So if I look up the heat of fusion of water in a textbook, I find out it's 80 calories per one gram. Okay? So we're going to plug in first how many grams we had. We had 50 grams. And the value for the heat of fusion, as I just said, is 80 calories per gram. And when you multiply those two values together, you should get 4,000 calories. So during the plateau, 
During the phase change, 4,000 calories had to be absorbed by the ice to turn it into liquid water. No temperature change going on at all. Let's move on to the third part of the graph. You'll notice the temperature is increasing. The liquid is going from 0 degrees Celsius and heating up to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is rising, we can calculate heat by using MC delta T. Let's go ahead and do that. Q equals MC delta T. We still have 50 grams of water. The mass throughout this process is not going to change. 50 grams. C, the specific heat capacity of liquid water, is different than it was for solid water. Again, the specific heat capacity is something that you could find in a textbook. For liquid water, the specific heat capacity is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. We can do a delta T by taking the final temperature. The final temperature is 100 minus the initial temperature of that line segment, zero degrees Celsius. When you're calculating delta T, make sure it's for this segment only, not for the entire process. So again, T final, 100, minus T initial, which is zero degrees Celsius. That's a total temperature change of 100 degrees. When you multiply those values together, we get 5,000 calories. Let's put it up top because we're running out of room. Part four of the graph brings us back to a plateau. We know that during a plateau, the temperature doesn't change. There has to be another way to figure out the energy that's absorbed by the liquid water to turn it all the way into water vapor, to turn it into steam. Going back to the equation that we used before, when we were melting, we said that heat equals mass times the heat of fusion. But the heat of fusion is the energy needed to melt a gram of ice. It's far more difficult to boil a gram of liquid water because you see the positions of the water molecules are dramatically changing. In liquid water, at this point, the molecules are still very close together, but moving and weaving in and out of each other. When we boil the gas, those water molecules are really changing positions. They're pulling away from each other. We know that water molecules are sticky. They're attracted to each other. So the amount of energy to pull them apart and create a gas is much greater than simply melting a gram of ice. The heat of vaporization for one gram of liquid water is 540 calories per gram. Notice that's much greater than the heat of fusion, which is 80 calories per gram. So let's try to calculate um, the heat of vaporization up top. We can say that Q equals the mass multiplied by the heat of vaporization. Again, the heat of vaporization is something I found in a textbook, and you can do that too. We still have 50 grams multiplied by 540 calories per gram. And this is going to be a really big number because as I said, vaporizing a gram of liquid water is much more difficult to do than melting one gram of solid water. This gives us 27,000 calories for the heat of vaporization. But we're not quite done. Remember that fifth segment, that small segment that took steam at 100 degrees Celsius and increase the temperature to 115 degrees Celsius. You'll notice we had a small increase in our temperature right there. So if the temperature is rising, you can tell there's an incline, the temperature is getting hotter, we can use MC delta T to calculate the heat that was absorbed during that small segment. So let's do segment five right here. Q equals MC delta T, 50 grams of steam. The specific heat capacity 
for water in the gaseous state is different from the specific heat capacity of liquid water and solid water. So if I look this value up in a textbook, it's 0.48 calories per gram degree Celsius. In terms of delta T, let's figure out the final temperature. The final temperature at the very, very end of the graph, 115. Minus the initial temperature of that segment. When we started right here, this was 100 degrees Celsius steam. And we had increased all the way up to 115 degrees. So T final, 115. Minus T initial, 100. When we calculate, we get 360 calories. So what we've done is five different calculations because we had five segments of this graph that were different. We had the solid phase and the ice was getting warmer. That absorbed energy. We melted ice. That took in energy in order to change the positions of the water molecules, which were really close together and just vibrating slightly, and turn it into liquid water molecules, which are moving all over the place. Going from liquid water at zero degrees Celsius up to 100 degrees Celsius, the water got a lot hotter, the molecules gained kinetic energy, and they're moving very, very fast by the time they reach that point. It required energy to boil the water and turn it into steam. And finally, in that last segment, we have water vapor at 100, increasing in temperature to 115. So we know those molecules at the end are very far apart from each other, and they're moving very, very quickly. So we've got five different calculations. If we want to figure out how much energy did it take to go through the entire five-step process, what do you think we would do? That's right. You have to add all five of the calculations together. So if we take the first, second, third, fourth, and way over here, the fifth, and we add all of them up, we can say Q total for the entire process was 36,785 calories of energy. In chemistry class, you might also be asked to convert calories into kilocalories. Well, that's a really easy calculation to do because there's a thousand calories in one kilocalorie. So basically, if we end up dividing by a thousand, we can find out that it took about 36.785 kilocalories to go through this process. 